Okay, so we've come to the end of this three-part series, this production series on how to do this master constraint. So the last thing we actually need to do is write the master constraint function and we're going to use what we've learned in the first part and in the second part and combine them in order to create this master constraint. So if you guys haven't seen the uh, the first two parts, make sure you check it out. Otherwise, it's going to be a little bit confusing what the hell I'm doing in this final part. So yeah, do go check it out. I'm going to put a link in the description to the first two parts. Um, and, you know, just make sure you go through those first. And, you know, just a quick summary of what we did in the last part, in the last lesson, is we wrote the transform lock state function. And that basically just checks whether the translate, rotates, and scales are locked. And we can use that now in our new function. We're going to call this new function master constraint. So what this function is going to do is it's going to, we're going to use this transform lock state function inside of this master constraint function and, you know, figure out how to constrain this up. You know, whether we need to uncheck the rotations when we're doing the constraints or whether we should skip the scale constraint entirely. So let's populate this function now. So I'm going to just give it two inputs, a source object and the follower objects. So followers like that. And let's just pass. And then we can test this function out by let's just print source. And then on a new line, let's print followers. Okay. So the intention of this is we want to give it one source object and a bunch of follower objects. So if I come out here and let's just hide the rig for now, I've still got my little locator here, but then I'm just going to create a bunch of cubes, right? So just scatter them around like this. So this, I want to be my source object. So um, let's remove this smart constraint transform lock now. And I'm going to keep this little cell there, but then I want to just, instead of calling this, uh, transform lock state, I want to call this master constraint function. So I can start to test the master constraint function now, like this. So we've got fun.masterConstraint, and then I'm passing the first selection, which is my locator. And if I select a bunch of additional objects, which are these cubes, I'm going to pass all the additional objects. So I'm going to say one to the end of the list, to the end of my selection, and then run this code. And I'm getting an attribute error because saying there's no, um, there's no, did I name this? Did I type the wrong thing? Master constraint. Master constraint. Let's just make sure I save this code and uh, let's copy this name. And then let's try this again. Still giving me an error. Eh, no attribute master constraint. So that's interesting. Oh, that's because we, um, did we reload this? We reloaded this. We need to type smart parent constraint here. Silly me, because it's nested inside of this. So it's fun, smart parent constraint, and then we get the master constraint function. So yeah, can't forget to actually, you know, you can actually shorten this code a little bit. This is a little bit verbose. So what you can actually do is kind of like how we do Maya.cmds as cmds, we can just do this as, you know, SPC maybe for smart parent constraint. And instead of reloading the entire thing, we can just reload SPC like that. So I can just do that. And then instead of this long line, I can just type SPC dot master constraint. It kind of just makes um, this long line you know, it shortens it as this abbreviated uh, SPC um, namespace rather than this like super long namespace there. So I can run this and now it should work. Now you can see it's printing my locator first and then it's printing the list, um, which is all the followers. So I'm printing my locator and then all the followers, which is my subsequent selections. Okay, let's, let's keep going. So we know that this function is working now. We've been able to access it. Now let's populate this function. So what do I want to do? We need to use um, kind of what we did last time where we did a for loop. So I can say for I in followers. 
So I'm saying for every follower, I want to do a constraint. I want to constrain it to the uh, source object. So as a test, I'm going to do cmds.parent constraint, and then I want my source object, and then I want i for each follower. And then let's maintain offsets using mo is equal to true. Now I'll save this code. Let's come back over to here. And then this time, let's just run this code to test it out. You can see it's constrained all these things up. So now we're kind of getting back to what we did last lesson where we just did a simple parent constraint to all these objects. And it's working great. So let's just undo that. And now I want to do a little test where I lock some channels in this. I want to lock the translates. So let's lock them like that. And then now let's try this code again and run it. And you can see it's going to fail because it can't do the parent constraint because one of the rotations is locked on this cube and it's failing when it gets to that point. So you, you can see it's kind of done these two first and then when it reaches here, it's failed and it hasn't done the last one because it's failed on this one first. So that's an important thing to understand. That's why we need this transform lock state function to kind of modify this parent constraint. So we can do the parent constraint. So we can do a parent constraint like cms.parent constraint. And you know, if we take a quick look at this again in the um, help on select command, and let's take a look at this skip rotate. Okay, so let's come down here. So it says causes the specified axis to be not considered when constraining rotations. And that's exactly what we want. So I'm going to copy that and I'm going to do parent constraint. Let's just do cell, cell one to the n. Maintain offset is equal to true. And let's skip rotate. So if I run this now on this one cube with the lock translates, you can see, okay, it's still, it's still erroring out. Okay. Why is it? We have to, instead of specifying whether it's true, it looks like we actually need to pass, um, you know, all the different axis X, Y, or Z and none rather than true or false. So yeah, miss this little part there. It's important to understand the documentation. So I'm going to imagine that because it's three different values, that it's probably going to take a, a list or a tuple. So I'm going to create a new tuple and I'm going to skip, let's just skip all the channels, X, Y, and Z. Run this function again. And now it's worked. Okay. It's done something. And, um, but it hasn't actually constrained the translates, interestingly. Let's try this again. Oh, it looks like I've had this other cube selected. Okay, let's try this again with the correct cube selected. Run this and okay. Uh, I see what's happening. It's because we need to refresh our selection. So it's always helpful to run the selection command again. Now we're kind of getting the correct thing. Okay, now you can see it's done the translates and it's skipped the rotates, but it's still working. I can still rotate this object and it still behaves as if it's translating, um, as if it's parented. You know, of course it can't do any rotations, but it's still behaving as if it's, you know, parent constraint. And that's perfectly fine for things like pole vectors where you don't really need to rotate them anyway. So let's use this skip rotate. Let's copy this entire thing and let's come back over to our PyCharm and then let's use this function here. So I'm going to add this into here so I don't forget it. And let's make this, let's format this code a little bit so it's a little bit easier to see. Create some new lines for each one of these arguments. And now let's do if so we can, we can get the states first. So the states is equal to transform lock state. And you can see the nice auto completion there. So we're going to run this transform lock state to check whether these attributes are locked. So I want to check I, so we're going to use our followers inside this translate lock state function, and then it's going to give us the states. And then I can check, I can say if, um, states, 
and then I want to look at the translates or better yet let's look at the rotates so I can say if the rotates is true which means it's locked then we're going to use this command otherwise we're going to just use the regular command so I'm going to I'm going to come here and do else like this so if it's if the rotates are locked then it will use this command else it'll use this regular parent constraint command without the skip rotates so let's save it now and let's test this out so I don't need this line anymore let's test this guy out again I'm going to zero this back and let's just delete the parent constraint there select my master object and then select all the followers and let's run this code and okay it's erroring out it's saying there's no key named rotates and that's because it's not rotates it's just rotate make sure I delete that s over there because it's just rotate and let's try this again run this code and now it's worked it's done the constraints and I can rotate all these guys around like normal and you can see this one special cube here which had the rotates locked it's actually still done the translate instead of just straight up failed and that is how you you know kind of check for whether attributes are locked or not you know and the last thing to do is we can check the scale so if you wanted to do a scale constraint what we can also do is come here and say if states scale is true um, is not true so I can say if it's not true so this you mean I mean this thing will return whether it's true or false based on the lock state and if it's true it means it's locked so if it's not true it means it's unlocked so if it's unlocked what we can actually do is do a scale constraint and I can constrain my source object to I which is the uh, object that it's iterating over and we can save this and now we kind of have this full-fledged uh, function which does um, checks for scales as well so I'm going to delete all that now and let's bring back our little rig I'm going to create a new locator to use as our master object just as an example and now I can grab all the controls I want to constrain to so I want to grab a bunch of these controls and you know just for fun maybe yeah let's just leave it at that for now and then I'll run this code and you can see, okay, it's done all the constraints. It's also done a scale constraint and, and it's kind of flipped this um, foot because it's trying to, you know, do it like it's trying to be smart and it's actually doing the wrong thing. But you, know, you kind of get the idea of how, how this is sort of working now. And it's kind of done the scale for this object because this uh, doesn't have the scale constraint locked. Whereas these ones do, but, and it's also got the rotations locked, but it's still managed to do the constraint on all these guys. Okay, so I'm going to zero this out. Yeah, and I mean, this is, a, this is more to do with the rig, this negative scale. It's more to do with the rig than it is to um, do with the code itself. And it's kind of unavoidable, you know, I mean, this rig has, you know, a negative scale on one of the, the controls above. And that's just, in, you know, so that when you do things like translate it, um, you know, it can, um, it can translate the same direction, even though, you know, these things are behaviorally mirrored. So it's, it's a bit of a limitation with this rig, but, you know, you, you still have like a nice little script that kind of does all the constraints for you. So if I hide this and let's create our little cubes again, for example, and you know for some of these I'll lock the scale and for some of these I'll lock the rotations and for this one maybe I'll just even lock one rotation and then now I can come here and select all these objects run the code and you can see okay it's still done the constraints and it hasn't failed on any one object I can even do the scaling so you can see it's, it's doing some interesting scaling there and of course this guy is locked here so it's not scaling with the rest of them but you can see the rest of them are scaling and because we're checking every single um, axis you know it skips the rotations entirely because it's found one rotate that is um, locked so it's a nice little thing there and if you wanted to still constrain these two you can 
you can modify the um, parent constraint skip rotate function here to just skip the axis that is locked but yeah that's a little bit of an extra exercise for you guys if you want to go that far yeah I mean this is kind of uh, it's a little bit advanced and I was kind of speeding through this otherwise this would be a super long video but yeah, I kind of went over a lot of different things you know it's kind of my workflow for how to work in both PyCharm as well as work in you know Maya with this script editor so I'm getting the best of both worlds I'm able to run the code interactively as well as um, you know get nice auto completion here and I'm using Vim which is a nice little plugin which is how I'm kind of jumping around these things so quickly you know Vim's a little bit advanced I, I don't think I don't recommend you guys go full Vim um, you know for me I like I like using Vim uh, I feel it feels really nice for me so but it's a whole learning curve definitely not advisable if you just want to get stuff done yeah and uh, I even go over like you know how to check documentation and kind of look at different flags and you know making a lot of mistakes along the way but it's, uh, it's good to leave that in there just so you guys can see how I kind of my thought process when I see errors and you know when I, whenever I get an error how do I like tech check it and um, you know figure out like where the error is occurring and also show you guys a little bit about you know modules and how to you know, shorten the namespace if you needed to in order to make it a little bit more convenient to code this sort of stuff yeah I wasn't kidding when I said it was a little bit more advanced um, uh, but yeah this is just like a nice little way to kind of you know, use a little bit of PyCharm and, and start thinking about your code more modularly and writing functions that kind of do just one thing like checking the um, attributes locked or not hopefully it was enjoyable Hopefully you learn a few things and make sure you stick around. Mm -hmm.